tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Johnson. Johnson. TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello and welcome to an all new UFC on AfterBuzz TV. My name is Daria Baronado and I'm here with Mr. J Tan and Mr. George Hermosa. Hey, Hi, lady. how you doing, guys? Good. How are you? Good. Great. Fantastic. What? Great. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. All right, guys, we're here talking about UFC 186 Johnson versus Horiguchi. What a dominant performance by Mr. DJ. Wow. We'll mm -hmm. talk about that later. And a surprising one. And a record-breaking one at that. R a really interesting record there, yeah. Right. That's going to stand the test of time, pardon the pun. Yes. But uh, it will, for sure, and we'll explain that We will get we there get shortly. It. <laughs> it went down in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, uh, this Saturday evening, and we are here telling you about it right now. Um, let's start from the bottom of the card and just go through some results. Let's see. Where do we want to start? All right. We had... Olivier Abun Mercier versus David Machad. Olivier won via rear naked choke in round three. Then we had Chad Lepre versus Brian Barberina. That won fight of the night. Chad won via unanimous decision. Then we had a bantamweight fight for the ladies, Alexis Davis versus Sarah Kaufman. So funny, we interviewed uh, Sarah Kaufman. Mm -hmm. Not so long ago. That's right, yeah. Talking to her about this fight. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of trash talk building up to this fight, but unfortunately, she could not live up to it, and uh, Davis finished Kaufman via armbar in round two. And you can catch that interview at youtube.com. Backslash what? After Buzz TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. or the MMA interview uh, playlist, if you if you will. That's that's on there. It's on there somewhere. Just type, <laughs> type in UFC After Buzz on YouTube. That's the easiest way to do it, guys. You'll find it. Uh, next, we have Patrick Cote versus Joe Riggs. Cote won via unanimous decision, 29-28 all around. And then going to our main card, at the bottom of the main card, we have Yves Jaboin versus Thomas Almeida. Is it Jaboin? Do you guys know? Uh, Jaboin is what I was Jabouin. told. French, French okay. Canadian, I believe. Yeah. Gotta get my French Yves accent Jabouin. on. What do you guys think? All right. Almeida wins via TKO in round one. Then we had John McDessie versus Shane Campbell. McDessie won via TKO in round one, but it didn't look like it was going that way in the first few minutes. It was mm -hmm. quite Definitely the comeback. Come from behind victory. Yes, very impressive. I love anytime I see that. I'm like, wow, because a lot of people when they're falling behind that early in a fight, they you know they kind of lose themselves mentally. Yeah, and they, it's hard to come back. So congratulations, McDessie. Uh, next, we had Fabio Maldonado versus Rampage Jackson making his return to the UFC. Uh, this was a catchweight at 215 because no. obviously it was somewhat short notice with all the legalities going on in Rampage's life. Which it shouldn't have been short notice. I mean, right? It's I, I suppose we can broach that subject when we get to the match as well. But you know, it's me. Are you it's saying off again. It, it's on? It's off? It's on? Right. If you really had that much confidence for it. I mean, it was off for only maybe about two weeks, I think, or so. So are you saying he should have continued training Absolutely. as, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. And so no reason for a catch weight is what you're saying? No. Yeah, I agree. But who should have continued training? Rampage. Rampage. Oh, yeah. Rampage got fat. Even even he acknowledged he kind of fell off the wagon a little yeah. bit. Uh, <laughs> it, we'll matches. talk about when we get there, because it's an interesting situation, and I yeah. can maybe give you some of my input. Um, Rampage won via unanimous decision, and he had quite the little acceptance speech after. Uh, we'll get to that as well. <laughs> Then we had Michael Bisping versus C.B. Dalloway, number 10 ranked contender versus the number 11 ranked contender. Uh, Bisping won via unanimous decision, 29-28 all around. And of course, the main event of the evening, DJ Mighty Mouse Johnson uh, defeated Kyoji Horiguchi. Uh, he's ranked number 7. DJ won via armbar in round 5. Get ready for this. 4 minutes and 59 seconds. How do you beat There's that? There's no more room after There's that, no guys. There's no room, guys. Maybe I one second. I don't even know. Well, a but nine, nine, only nine barely. tenths of a second. Yes. And how would you even calculate that? Like, the person that has to do this, I feel bad. 
Well, well they you won't. know, they won't, so we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not going to happen anytime it'll, it'll soon. It'll be called 458, if anything. Um, yeah, well, you know, timekeepers uh, are, are officials trained by the state athletic commission, just like anybody else. So, that's true. You know, it's it's funny because that's not a job that you really think too much about, but there's actually quite a bit on the line on that one. They've got two stopwatches because not only you got to make sure that only two. Well, two, because you're counting down the rounds, but also the minutes in between. Right. You don't want to give them any more. And you've got, a, you know, the system of, like, banging the 10-second the mark, yes, yes. you know, and then the horn itself. And uh, it's, yeah, it, it's one of those underrated positions. Definitely. So somebody's going to be have to. They do it in track, too. I remember when I used to run track, they yeah. have the people there with the stopwatches, and they had, like, well, our moms used to do it. I don't know if that's just, like, <laughs> a Jersey thing, but, like, they, they were like, who wants to do it today? And, you know, I don't know if that's the same amount of training, then, exactly, yeah. <laughs> as, a, as a pro MMA but fight, But my huh? point was that they would always have two watches, <laughs> and mm-hmm. that we would compare them and be like, oh, let's go with the faster time. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> anyway, let's start from the bottom well, of the main I think after the thing, we're going to have some late-breaking news. I, I after agree. We go over the car. <laughs> even, though, even though, let's be honest, a lot of people probably do listen to this on iTunes the day later mm-hmm. hours later so but at at the present time of re, us recording six literally so six p.m in roughly. the last hour two hours exactly. we just keep getting all these new six things 15. that are okay definitely six. relevant to the next ufc pay-per-view yes i uh it's def- definitely groundbreaking news but we'll I'll have updates you... as long as our wi-fi sticks up for the next 40 minutes mm-hmm. or so. yeah i'll have george keep <laughs> checking and you let us know if it's if it's confirmed but we'll talk about it soon let's start with uh yves jaboyne versus thomas almedia so, Amadia won via TKO, obviously. Really good double leg by mm-hmm. Jaboyne in the first. Um, Amadia setting lots up... Lots of so- left kicks from... Uh, oh, you're going to say that right now? Leg no, kicks. Bad. Oh, so lots of leg kicks yeah. from Amadia. I, was, I said setting up combos and landing overhand right, so now you're good. You know, it feels Cheers. like this... Uh, taking a step back a little bit, this show overall, uh-huh. uh, obviously being snake bit as it was, you know, with the fight card changing consistently from when they announced it to uh, to the final result, you know. Right. Um the two things stuck out in the matches that that we did have this uh, the show. It seemed like it was there was a lot of decisions. Mm-hmm. This was like decision central here, you know, and was was kind of frustrating as I was watching the the early prelims and then later on the uh, the prelims. Um, it was just decision after decision after decision. I was waiting for something <laughs> for us to have a, a real barn burner. But the other thing, and it ties to uh, Yabuin versus Almeida. This was uh, this. There was a lot of kicks. We saw a lot of uh, you know kick fests in a lot in these I matches. Agree, yeah. You know, guys. This thing uh, versus Dalloway was a kickboxing match. This thing in Dalloway, we saw awesome. Rampage actually start to use his kicks. I mean, and he I said, think he just discovered his legs. Quite frankly, well, he specifically said to Joe Rogan after he's like, "Yeah, Joe Rogan, you're always saying that I don't throw kicks." He goes, yeah. "There you go, you know." Yep. So it's kind of yeah. like a little touche. Yeah, but this one as well. Uh, Yabuin and uh, and Almeida were trading kicks a lot. Um, Almeida uh, survived that double leg. You know. Yep. Got up. And Got then, back up. Yeah, and stunned Yabuin against the cage, just started going to town on him. They they both started um, kind of stiff. And then mm-hmm. you noticed Almeida really falling into his groove and coming into his own. Yeah. And really good. This guy is really, really good at level changes. Mm-hmm. Guys, if that's a part of your game that you're working on, go watch Thomas Almeida because he was so good at switching up, you know, left left hook to the body, right overhand to the head. And it mm-hmm. was like, it was so brilliant because... It's so hard to fight somebody like that because right. every time you go to block a shot, you're getting you know hit somewhere where you don't expect it. Yeah, a lot of guys you're just worried about left, right, left, right. Exactly. But if you got four or six different quadrants to worry about, it, right. uh, yeah, throws it's the a, game off. You know, and it's a it's a hard thing to learn how to do because a lot of people um, when they first start they like to stay at bay and they like to use their reach and you know stay you know they don't like that inside dirty boxing. But mm-hmm. once you learn it, it's it's a craft unbeaten. Yeah. Next, we have John the Bull McDessie versus Shane Campbell. Shane Campbell, is he the tallest guy in that weight class? Because he is really tall. He could be. I know George Roop, uh, I think George is at 145, actually, uh-huh. as opposed to 55. Um, yeah, these were a couple of lightweights. He, no, I don't know offhand. Nate, Nate Diaz is like 6'1", I think. Is he? How, how tall is Shane Campbell? 5'11". Oh, you have that already. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe it's just his body structure that makes him look super tall. Long and lanky yeah. limbs, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Shane Campbell started off with some really hard leg kicks that I think was stunning everybody. Mm-hmm. And he rocked McDessie a couple times. But McDessie comes back, rocks Campbell, and almost finishes him in the first round. Mm-hmm. And then 
comes back, rocks him again, and finally finishes it. Oh, with 10 seconds left in the first round, he does finish yeah. it in the first I, round. I think That's this right. is the one I was thinking of regarding the, the, the kick fests. Uh, yeah. Less, less about uh, Shabuin and Almeida, but more specifically this one. For um, sure. Yeah, they were going back and forth, and uh, uh, Matt came back. Campbell's kick looks so hard. I don't know if it's just because the sound, they were, they were like slap kicks, so you mm -hmm. really heard it in the microphone, but they, they, they looked like they hurt, too. Yeah. Next, we have the return of... Uh, Actually, other way. CB Dalloway and Bisbing was next. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I, you're I, that right. was my bad. I screwed it up you on the card there. You screwed me up. Oh, no. No, no I, should, I, sh I should have known I did watch it about 20 <laughs> minutes ago. That's, that's live internet for you. That's there working you go, without guys. a net, as we do here. Well, not George. <laughs> well, I, mean, I did just see it 20 minutes ago. Yeah, you so. did. Yeah, so did I. Uh, anyway, next we have Michael, the Count Bisbing versus CB Dalloway. Uh, Bisbing, like I said, won be unanimous decision. This one was a good back and forth match as well. Mm -hmm. I, this could have won fight of the night, I believed. This was one of the few, the very, very few, few fights, maybe even one, two, maybe handful, where I was not unhappy with the result. Like it could have really gone either way. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you could have had T, uh, C, uh, CB Dalloway totally. win, and I'll be like, yeah, uh, Bisbing won. Yeah, okay, cool. I don't even like Bisbing. Right. So that goes to show, it's like, oh, I really thought. It was that close. It could have gone either way. Yeah. yeah, it was back and forth. No no one guy, you know, had any defiant moment in the fight that I remember, at least. Yeah. Whereas, you know. Mostly a stand-up fight. Dalloway didn't really try to use his wrestling too much. There were a couple of shots, but Bisping right. has, has had a lot of fights against, uh, you know, very decent and qualified wrestlers. Right. Um and so he's able to he's able to predict that stuff and you know pretty get out pretty easily unless you can really really chase after it. And, and well, Michael Bisping keeps such a fast pace throughout the entire fight. That is well, he's really hard to keep up with. And mm -hmm. uh, CB Dalloway slowed down early. You could tell uh, into mm -hmm. the second round and the third round especially he was slowing down yeah. and he just couldn't keep up with Bisping anymore. So he's playing more of the defensive game, kind of trying to move a lot and or not move so much and not throw as much, but yeah. just to be defensive. Dalloway uh, definitely won the first one with a knockdown on Bisping, and then I uh -huh. believe he uh, got him to the ground. Uh, they dropped him with a left probably about midway through uh, through the round um, and, and followed up with flurries, but Bisping was able to escape. That was definitely the most damage, I'd say, in that uh, that first round. Right. Uh, this was a kickboxing match. I mean, it exactly. stayed on the feet yeah. the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second round was pretty close for me to score. I didn't uh, didn't have it. Nobody really stuck out uh, to me significantly. Mm -hmm. um, then I gave Bisping the third. Um, by that point, it was all Bisping with combos. Dalloway uh, really did slow down, that, slow down that second one. Um, it seemed like it was quantity versus quality when you talk about or, or broad strokes with generalizing their uh, um, their striking. Bisping was circling around, really busy. Busy. I don't remember actually what the numbers were or anything, but right. Dalloway just kept looking like he was, you know, had that right cocked and and swinging for the fences. And even his left hook was right. nasty. You know, there was a lot of power behind that one. That's the one he caught Bisping in the first. So. Um, it seemed like he was looking for that knockout punch. And you know what? Jo Joe Rogan actually said it perfect. When you're looking for that punch sometimes, mm -hmm. it just doesn't come. Yeah. Honestly, when you just stay technical and when you just fight, mm -hmm. your fight, those knockouts come. And you're like, oh, my God, I just I just rocked him. You know, and then you, you finish it the way you finish it. But a lot of the time when you're praying to finish the fight immediately, it just doesn't come. That's one of those things where you get uh, overexcited or, or over focused on something. Right. Um, it's like it's like Bruce Lee Enter the Dragon at the early. You know. She doesn't know what that is. Look. Oh, hey. That's, <laughs> that's right. It was uh, that movie's been around. You guys are like older right, than you are. In the Karate Kid with Jaden Smith. Okay. <laughs> that's more. I haven't weird. seen that one. I I saw the original Karate Kid. Give me some credit. Who's in okay. It? Well, go see the original and the only Enter the Dragon. The go point ahead. is the the scene. You'll know what I'm talking about. Pointing up at the sun. And missing all that is all the heavenly glory. Yes. It's early. I'm, I'm not doing the scene justice, but uh, it has to do with. Go uh, watch it, guys. Tra yeah, Check it out. Um, this is not a shawade. We must concentrate. He just hit him. Well, yes. It was a, it's about to be. A yeah, girl it was good. Fight. That's not the first time that's happened. But that was my uh, Bruce Lee impression. Anyway, guys, that's your movie review for the uh, for the for UFC After Buzz. Thanks, I'm J10716. We'll see you again <laughs> next week. Anyway, no, the point was that that was, you know, with the, with Dalloway and the striking, you know, you get a little bit 
too focused on that one thing that you want, you're looking for it, and you miss everything else. Yeah, you I know? mean, it, it's tunnel vision. It's tunnel vision. It's, Thank you. It's there. trying to hone Much in more succinct there. on something, you know, and, and you're, you could get clipped doing that. I yeah. think your body tenses up when you do that. Um, at least it does for me. Like when, I, when I'm sparring and I'm focusing, like, oh, my God, I, I have to land this overhand right. You know, sometimes I land the overhand right, but other times, yeah. you know, I get caught with the left because I don't see it coming. Yeah. Who do we have next? Fabio Maldonado. I like saying that name, Fabio Maldonado. I feel like it could be a time. <laughs> Giving you a little homesickness? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, versus Quentin Rampage Jackson. Backstory time. Backstory time. Mm -hmm. Hit it, George. God damn it. Well, you knew it was so, going to go to you. A few months ago, it was announced Rampage was back in the UFC. Right. And But on, on, obviously, a lot of us were like, wait, wasn't he just in Bellator? They Supposedly were Bellator. a free agent with Bellator, um, yeah. I guess even going back even further, I mean, that was one of Bjorn Rebney's guys. Like, he was the one that signed Rampage. That was a big score. Yeah. Uh, King Mo was very like, oh, that's your boy. You know, I'm not Bjorn gonna... Rebney being the founder of Bellator. Yeah, for those at the time, the, the, the um, I didn't. guy who ran Bellator. There's a name for that. Bjorn Rebney. But there's a name for that. Promoter? P sure. Founder? Yeah, sure. President? Uh, well, I mean, he's still the f president. CEO. I guess we guess can say president. <laughs> Because the only thing he still is the founder, but he doesn't have anything to do with the Bellator anymore. Uh, you know, King Mo was very explicit in his there was Rampage's really, relationship with Bjorn Rebney. Yeah, there was a, a really good opportunity with King Mo, who was already there uh, and never got picked up by the UFC, ironically, in the Strike Force. He was about uh, to, but then he messed it up. Yeah. Um, so Rampage being there, King Mo versus Rampage, obviously, is a. Uh, how do you put it? It's a, it's a feud. Made in heaven. You can promote the hell out of that. And that did, uh, they did have, have a match. Rampage went three for three in, uh, in Bellator, uh, walking away from, from the UFC, really disgruntled by that point. I think he was on a four-fight losing streak, right. if I remember correctly. Yeah, I feel like he lost like Bader, Teixeira. Yeah, Bader and Teixeira. Yeah. Um, there was another one as well. But, you know, walking away and, and going to Bellator, that just didn't work out. Uh, before you knew it, Bjorn is gone. And Rampage and his management had declared themselves free agents, mm -hmm. saying that Bellator breached contract by not meeting certain uh, certain points in the contract. I mm -hmm. believe part of it was a reality con reality show series, um, which did ri they had a three episode series, uh, but it didn't fly. Parts in Paramount Movies because by this point Bellator is owned by by Viacom, um, and I think a couple other. Uh, uh, Disclosure or lack of disclosure of pay-per-view buys for the one pay-per-view event which Rampage did, which was Rampage versus, I believe, Czech Congo? No, it was King Mo. Mo. It was the King Mo match. Um, so he declared himself a free agent and they were in, signed with the UFC. And Bellator came back with an injunction saying that Rampage was, uh, was still under contract with them. They won that injunction about, what, a month or three weeks before the show. And then after that... The injunction got flipped over, and Rampage was allowed to fight again. Right. This was, was like reversed. two, three days ago. So mm -hmm. this is the, yeah, exactly. I feel bad for Fabio Maldonado, if anything. That's the guy that is put in a bad situation. But, you, I mean, he's going to get an opponent regardless, right? He did. He already had an opponent. Right. Steve Fossey so, should, should be the guy we feel bad about. That's true. Now, he, that he, guy he has ups and downs as well. In and career. out, then in and out. But, I mean, if you're Rampage Jackson, mm -hmm. and you might have a fight coming up, your first fight returned to the UFC, mm -hmm. regardless of the legalities, you train 120%. We're talking like, about the weight now. Yeah, well, the weight and the training. You know, mm -hmm. you don't stop training. Mm -hmm. You act like you have a fight. Yeah. Um, I can understand if it's, you know, lower level and you're just like, oh, well, it's not worth anything. You know, but you're fighting for the UFC. You're getting your shot back in the UFC. You take yeah. this seriously, regardless of the legality. So yeah. for him, for them doing the catch weight, I don't know if that was his well, in the argument? In, yeah, I heard an interview with him uh, somewhere on TV where uh -huh. uh, when the bout, when the injunction was first placed and approved, uh, Rampage said that he kind of fell off the wagon with his training and um, ballooned up, got fat, and then when it was on again, um, I, I don't know where the sequence of events with that, but obviously it was at 2.15 so that uh, mm -hmm. uh, at least one or both guys could make weight. Because Fabio Maldonado was scheduled to fight Steve Fossey, who's also kind of an interesting, um, an interesting backstory. Originally a, a hockey player, what they call a goon, an, an enforcer. I believe in Montreal, might, maybe for an amateur team, not amateur, excuse me, but like a, a farm Minor league, league pro yeah. team, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and had retired from hockey, 
made his bones in Canadian MMA scene. Um, you know, I think it was ten and zero at the time. Mm -hmm. Fought in uh, in Edmonton for um, Maximum Fighting Championships. Had a bit of a name going for him. You mm -hmm. know, was a rising star, even though he was a bit late to the game in terms of his age. Um, and uh, I believe was signed to the UFC, or was about to be signed, and decided to retire from MMA. Wow. Jump ahead. I want, I want to say that was like last year or so. Jump ahead to, to this rampage situation, the injunction, and mm -hmm. it being in Montreal, and Steve having played hockey there, you know, he's got a little bit of a, a namesake locally. <laughs> so, uh, so they stuck him in there. So he fight. didn't have Fabio. a UFC contract prior to this deal? Uh, I don't remember exactly specifically, but I know they, they were looking at him. He was, there was talk about him getting the call up wow. as of the last MFC fight that I saw him in, which is at least a, a year, maybe two years ago. I love talking to guys that have played two professional sports and being yeah. like, you know, what's it like being a professional? I mean, hockey is a perfect example because mm -hmm. hockey has combat in it mm -hmm. and it's a violent sport yeah. in, some, in some aspects. So it's like... What is it like being, you know, a professional hockey player opposed to like a professional MMA fighter? Well, it's certainly a violent sport. It's hard hitting, and right. it's even harder to fight. I mean, fighting is one thing, but you get to stand on your two feet. Fighting on skates, man, you know. I throw couldn't in... imagine. I watched those guys, and I'm uh -huh. like, that is such good. Like that is talk about good footwork. right? That is a footwork drill. Like <laughs> if my coach really wants me to be the best boxer, Coach James, if you really want me to be the best boxer, put me on ice skates. I'll break my ass, so it probably wouldn't be. Maybe a that's good not idea. then. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it is certainly that. it does require balance. Yeah, you're not yeah. throwing knees or high kicks. That's for sure. You can't um, feel super bad for Steve Bossy because he still got paid. Oh, true. There is very that good point. Hopefully he'll uh, he'll get a, a fight as well. Yeah. I mean, if if anything, you should give him give if him he his pay. I want to say if he wants to fight. If he wants to fight, it sounds like he was on retirement. Well, enjoying what the fighter pinacolatas. that hasn't fought in the UFC doesn't want to fight in the that, UFC. That is valid. That is valid. Yeah. Um, hmm. But, you know, this match, Maldonado versus Rampage, um, I, I got to say, I was a little bit uh, disappointed. <laughs> I got to uh, think about this. I want to say, part of me wants to say disappointed um, because it wasn't, uh, Maldonado really had a shot to, to make a name for himself, and I, I don't think that he grabbed the brass ring there. Uh, Rampage was, did come in with some new tricks, like, uh, like the kicks. Um, he was pressuring Maldonado uh, a lot, chasing after him mm -hmm. uh, around the ring. Mar Maldonado was playing the outside and, and just not really coming in with flurries like Rampage was. You know? Maldonado was playing Maldonado. Hit me, and I don't care. Like, mm. he was taking, and, and, and Jack, uh, Rampage said that he gave him everything he had as far as power goes, mm -hmm. and Maldonado was just completely unfazed. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, can this guy take any more shots? Like, he just... Was taking him and taking him and taking him and he's, he's a terminator him. like that. Yeah, yeah he it's can awesome. take it. But you've also got to. I mean, you don't win a fight just by taking shots, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, unless of course somehow a defensive move knocks the other guy out because that would be cool. Well, we uh, we didn't see that. No, but um, you know, rampage. I I can understand how all of this on again off again took just uh, dis got distracted him. Took a little bit out of him. He said it was the most stressful thing he's ever gone through, and I you know yeah. I can understand that. Imagine. This lawsuit, and you're getting ready for a fight, but you don't know if the fight's going to happen, and keeping it all straight in your mind, it's probably very stressful. Also, also one thing that I think not a lot of people don't notice is, imagine yourself, take yourself in a situation. Okay. You know, you have I'm a job. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, all right, cool, I'm working, I'm working, and then finally, I'm going to get paid at the end of the month. But something happens where you don't get paid at the end of the month, and you're not going to get paid. So, right. a lot of that goes on to the fact that we're, here they are, expecting this paycheck because of the fight, and then... They're not going to fight. So now, it's like, really now, now you're messing with not only their training, but now their paycheck. They're mm -hmm. earning to make a living. Mm -hmm. so but you're I, only I can... talking about Rampage, not Maldonado. Yeah, Maldonado's... I'm talking about Rampage. Yeah. 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 Well. So I'm saying, I, I completely understand where that's right. That's the first thing I thought when you said, you know, stressful time and whatnot. You thought of the economics? I thought economically. It's kind of messed up. But that happens... No matter what, that's part of the fight game. At it any is. moment, but, but the think, match can fall But out. not because of an injury. But, I mean, the, it goes back to, like, the Eddie Alvarez thing back in the day. It's like, mm -hmm. now you're kind of taken away from their... F being completely healthy, now you're taking away their paycheck. Oh, but they were willing to give him fights. They were going to yeah. give him fights is the difference. It's huh. not like they were saying, you can't fight... You're not going to fight for us, and you can't fight for them. It yeah. wasn't on the promotion, but it was st It was on the, but, the court. But even know, so, like, expecting issue. today, or essentially last night, to be their, pay their, their money. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, maybe they're willing to give them the fights, but when? I get what you're saying, because, like, when you get the phone call from... You know, Sean Shelby or Dana White or whoever calls you, and it's like you're going to be fighting on this date. You go, oh, cool. 
I'm gonna buy that new car when I, you know, whatever. It is. I'm gonna pay that bill off. <laughs> that sounds like a rampage move. Actually, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna buy that Mercedes Benz when I'm done with this fight. <laughs> not, not to say that it's that superficial, but mm -hmm. you know, you have things that you probably set. You know, you sort out your bills, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna pay this off and do this and this, and then. I know you're not getting the check. Because I'm sure a lot of people do yeah. look at that paycheck from the you know UFC as a way you know to make a living. Cool. Now I can pay my bills. Now I can you know take my family to Disneyland. Right. You think like about that. those things. So you but take Rampage, that away. He has that with with Bellator, and he may have to uh, he may, he may have to do that still. I mean, there's still a lot of legal stuff to work out. There's the lawsuit paying off the lawsuit. Happen. Yes, paying off the well if. If he has to, if, or the if one is filed and right. uh, and he loses, there's going to be that. Um, but it's not like I mean, he, when he signed with the UFC, it's not like he didn't know there was going to be backlash from Bellator. Yeah. You know, he'd be foolish to think that there wasn't going to be. Right. And obviously, yeah. we knew that there was because shortly after that, Scott Coker, after Rampage announced that he was si that he'd signed with uh, the UFC. Uh -huh. Scott Coker tweeted about that, saying he is our guy. I mean, there were legal wheels in motion. It's not right. like he caught this off guard, and that it, that's true. Yeah, it, you know, it, it ripped him off of a paycheck. You know? That is true. Um, so, you know, I, I'm curious what what they do with him next. I'm not sure because he's kind of he he wants to make a run for for the title, rack up all of uh, some you know, avenge his losses, right? And make a run, but I, I don't see him really being that competitive against. Uh, you know, if the rampage that we saw last night is the rampage that continues to fight, I don't know that we see him uh, really crack past the bottom half of the top 15. I say, you know, you give him a couple more fights, you see if he can be the rampage that we remember from year, you know, pride days. Oh, I think those days are long those past. Those are over. If anything, he kind of uh, implied he's the best fighter from Tennessee. OSP isn't from Tennessee, but he fights out of Tennessee. So why not put Rampage against Ovis St. Pru? That is a very good marketing ploy. George. People did talk good about that. Yeah, up. mentioned that. Oh man, look at that! Uh... His dirty boxing looked amazing. I know really he, he needed he needs to clean his clean his hands. <laughs> he was dirty. And then, that was hilarious. Whatever. Yeah. Shots from the clinch. Body shots. Yep. Um, o OSP ranked number seven. Rampage not ranked. Not there but at then all. again, I'm sure he'll probably at least get the 15th slot. If, well, he beat yeah. Fabio at 12. For beating so, yeah. Fabio at 12, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Plus, who's that? Jan Blakowicz? Jan Blakowicz. Jan Blakowicz. Who's that? You know Jan? You know Jan. You've seen Jan fight? You've seen Jan fight? Something That's else like she's not going to copy me like saying? Stupid. Something else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Sorry for those listeners. You know what's funny? Oh, you know what? Funny. what? I've yet to watch this fight. The, the Poland one. Oh, I've only whole, seen the whole I, card, right? I only saw the show. first match and the last match. Oh, well, you need to do your homework. Wow. Which you can do. Where? I don't know, man. Fightpass.com. No, UFC.com slash get, Fightpass. How much do we get paid for promoting Fightpass? You can actually, 0. 0.00, but you can get it yourself for $9.99. I, I, I believe for a month. you can actually go to UFC.tv as well. I think that brings you to Fightpass. <laughs> okay. There's so many ways, guys. So many ways. I, I really want to know... If anybody watching this show or listening on iTunes have actually ordered it because of us, guys, please tell me that you guys us, at least let us know. Tweet us at U, uh, ABTV UFC. That's a hashtag. No, hashtag yeah, the hashtag, hashtag yeah. ABTV, ABTV UFC. UFC. And let us know if you heard us talk about Fight Pass and it made you want to buy it. Or or comments on on YouTube. I bet my man Joe Boza. I like. He uh, might dabble a little bit with that Fight Pass. Huh? Yeah, Joe, Joe Boza. What do you think? What do you think? Speaking of Fight Pass, I, I just really like the navigation of it. I think it's really easy. Like if you if you select the fight. It kind of tells you on the timeline, mm -hmm. you know, when there's like a flurry, when the round ends, when yeah. it finishes, yeah. when you know it starts. It's like the most high tech thing ever. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, guys. You can cut to the best parts of the matches and like. And George it has old pride fights, which is one of my favorite parts. Do they do that with the pride fights too? Uh, no, okay. but it has old. I don't, oh, okay. I don't know, but it has old pride fights. I have to go back and watch some the, fl of those. the flurry thing you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I don't know. Of... I don't know. That would Question. be interesting. That would be awesome. Yeah. It would be like every second there'd be a flurry button. <laughs> Especially when you watch like guys like Don Fry fight, it would be like, Dah. it would go off the meter. Anyway, let's get to the main event of the evening. We have DJ Mighty Mouse Demetrius Johnson versus Kyoji Horiguchi. Um, DJ looking like DJ. I mean, does this guy ever fall off the radar? Does he ever fall off of the perfect line that he walks on? I mean, he always just looks so amazing. He composed. continues to clean out the division. Horiguchi, I believe, uh, what, ranked number seven at the time that he uh, challenged here. Yep. Um, yeah, DJ 
continues to impress people that don't quite know. It, it seems like um, it's a little bit like the uh, the Mike Tyson Ronda Rousey thing, right? Where the more people see him, the more people get converted. Nobody really seems to get unconverted, if you will. You know, um, it, it's a matter of people. Although, granted, these these are not ninety second wins we're talking about. Mm-hmm. DJ took Horiguchi all five rounds, almost, well, almost all same, five rounds. At the same pace. Yeah, at the same pace, dominating. I mean, it was very clear cut uh, through. I actually didn't get to see the first round, come to think of it, but um, the the second through the fifth, it, it was all DJ. Takedowns when he wanted, uh, speed, the, the s- controlling the back and everything. I swear to God. Jay looked down. Go ahead. When I first started watching, and especially in the first minute or two, uh-huh. it literally looked like I was watching it fast forward. We said I that. am not exaggerating. Like, by, I know I'm not. Yeah. People say, oh, that sounds exaggeration. I'm literally not exaggerating. It's like, not fast forward, but just like the next up as far as like the fast. The next speed up, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh my God, these guys are so quick. Mm-hmm. They these, are these punches that so just come quick. in and out. All right, Kyoji Horiguchi has mastered this one art. And I don't even consider it like hmm. an art in martial arts because no one else does it. He, This is what he does. He stands there, he has his little bounce, and then he pounces in like a hyena. Or mm-hmm. do hyenas pounce? I don't know. Let me know. Yeah, do they? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Alexa says, yeah. They, he pounces in and just flurries. Yeah. And it's like you never know when he's going to come at you. So he has no easy challenge. So right. Demetrius Johnson making him look the way he did is just how good Demetrius Johnson is. Mm-hmm. This is not no no lack of skill for Horiguchi. He's still amazing. Yep, um, absolutely. Demetrius Johnson would get takedowns where... I couldn't even see him getting a takedown. I mean, he had uh, Horiguchi's back maybe a dozen times throughout the fight, Mm -hmm. and I didn't even see it coming. You talk about a guy, uh, the speed, as as everyone really attributes, is is one of his strongest uh, attributes, DJ. The speed, his wrestling ability. He wrestled, I believe, I want to say three years in high school. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember talking with him years ago before he was uh, was with the UFC, and we sat down and did an interview, and I got his background about... uh, um, about his his training and pre MMA existence, he did something called track club <clears throat> in high school. Uh, for lunch, I mean, he, he he ran track and also wrestled for, like I said, I, I think the three years. Right. During lunch period, or I mean, they don't have recess, free period, whatever you want to call it. Right. Study hall. Study hall. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Never mind. You guys had a study hall. Yeah. I never had a study hall. Girl. Well, you probably needed a lot of work educationally. I mean, I had detention. There you go. But. That's like a study hall. DJ would just go to the track, and I think this was a club, or some some people would do it, for however long the entire period was. They would just run. They would run. It was called track club. Running track nonstop for that, that time. So That should be called the club from hell. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it is. Um, you know, on, on top of all of his other just natural athletic gifts you know the guy has lived clean through for as, as long as i've his known his entire life known, right yeah and trained uh consistently and not and only that i i have i've never trained with dj i would love to but i imagine he's one of those guys where you tell him how to do something and he does it amazingly the first time that's the other key to their success i know that i i can tell that by watching i don't know that but i can tell by watching him fight because the way he executes things, mm-hmm. he's just so on point all the time. And it's so amazing to watch. Like, talk, let's talk about the finish. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was, he had him in side control. DJ mm-hmm. had Horiguchi in his side control. After and the 29th takedown. After the 29th takedown, <laughs> exactly. And within seconds, you hear his coach, Matt, Matt Hume, apparently said, mm-hmm. arm bar. And there was like 10 seconds left. We're all like, arm bar. Yeah, shut up, Matt Hume. You know, he's going to get the The fact that he anyway. doesn't even need to Oh, do I that. didn't say that. And I promise, Wiz, I didn't say that. <laughs> I, I, I didn't say that. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Don't hurt me. Um, but within literally seconds, he crossed the guard. Mm-hmm. Passed guard to full mount. No, passed to crucifix mount. Then, no, full mount, you're right. Then crucifix. Uh-huh. And then the arm bar from mount within literally maybe four seconds. Yes. I don't even know how your body moves that fast. And got got in that position and was able to exert the energy, the the pressure. And right. Horiguchi tapped out at 4.59. That was insane. Um, Matt, Matt is uh, somebody that is kind of in, in the fight career, in his fight career, has raised DJ since day one. He started uh, with AMC, mm-hmm. actually a secondary uh, or a sister school to AMC at the time. But um, Matt, for the most part, has... Uh, DJ has been one of Matt's protégés. And Matt Hume, guys, again, I think we've talked about this in the past, but go to Fight Pass. Go, actually, I don't know if they, uh, 
if they have Matt Hume matches. If not, then YouTube. I'm Matt, sure they do. Matt Hume is a guy, he's an OG in the sport. He puts the O in OG. Um, he's been around training. He trained in Japan in the mid 90s, I believe. Mm -hmm. You know, with he was there by the t before Sh Frank Shamrock got there to train. Um, fought in uh, Pancrase, I believe, and a bunch of other uh, it, uh, other places that uh, that don't exist anymore. Other promotions, and has been one of those minds. A lot of people tout Greg Jackson and had a great mind for for MMA. Matt Hume and Greg Jackson really on that same level. And you know, Matt, take nothing away from. Uh, uh, from Yoda there, mm -hmm. Jackson. Um, you know, Matt has has mm -hmm. fought in those early uh, those early years and really has seen this whole thing develop. He's been involved in an intense level with the North American MMA scene locally in Washington State, as well as you know taking Josh Barnett to the UFC title way back in the day, yep. and also the Japanese scene, which traditionally has been several years ahead of the U.S. scene. So the guy's seen it all, done it all, at least most of it, if not all of it. And DJ, there's a synergy with those guys. I think they get each other on a, on a personal level of focusing on the work at hand. I think they like to work and get take these these tactics, these think, lessons, whatever you want to call it, and implement it into the game plan. Mm -hmm. That's what they thrive on is taking a game plan or, or, or whatever tools and arsenal, perfecting it and creating themselves to the best of their abilities. And it shows because DJ is in that conversation, pound for pound best. He, yeah, absolutely. In the conversation, honestly, this is a new uh, realization for me because I, I've often said, you know, Jose Aldo is the best or, um, you know, Hannah Brow in, in the past. And I've, I've also, often said other guys, but I mm -hmm. honestly think as of this second, DJ is the number one pound for pound you know i think he's been that's and that's the funny knock that's the other story to come out of this whole show uh mm -hmm. montreal is um is kind of the the aura around dj i think this is his performance last night um will put him on another level mm -hmm. um he's always in my opinion when you clean out a division like you do like a lot of these guys do when you clean out the ufc division then you're in that conversation for pound for pound best. DJ did that a while ago. You know, he lopped off the top five guys a while ago, and people just weren't quite uh, picking up what he was putting down. And a lot of people say it's because the because he's a champion at 125. People don't care about the lighter weight guys, yeah, yeah. which maybe that's true. It's an unfortunate, uh, stupid mentality among casual fans that just I think don't aren't exposed properly, don't quite get it, haven't seen enough MMA to appreciate. But also DJ was, DJ's a, he's a nice guy. He doesn't necessarily like, he doesn't like the ruffle feathers. Um, he, um, he, he's not one to, um, to stand out for the sake of standing out. He's the anti Conor McGregor. Right. He well, likes to let his actions speak louder than his words. I think you said it perfectly the first time. He's a workhorse. Yes. He loves to work. Mm -hmm. And even if they showed, uh, they panned to DJ's corner and then they panned over to uh, Horiguchi's corner. Mm -hmm. And the difference in uh, what was going on in those corners was okay. immense. Mm -hmm. Horiguchi's nose was bleeding and, and, they're, and they're rubbing his back and they're like, oh, da, 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 yeah. whatever they were saying. And then you go to DJ's corner and he's like, all right, that's what you're going to do. All yep. right, cool. All right, cool. All right, yeah. cool. And then and then that was that. And it's like, <laughs> oh my God, why is he so calm? And he's answered like, you know how usually in a guy's corner, you know, the coach goes like, Do you hear me? And he's like, Yeah, yeah, I hear you, you know, you know, and they're all out of breath. DJ's mm -hmm. like, Yep, I hear you, yep, I'm here. Yeah. Like as if me or you were saying it, you know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. so he is so focused and so composed when he's fighting. Yeah. And I honestly through the years of being in this industry, I've seen that play out for the benefit of ninety percent of the guys that are like that. Like mm -hmm. You know, all of my teammates that the most composed guys are the guys that, that go the furthest because that attitude gets them through so much adversity in the sport. That squad is nothing but business. They know when to have fun, but the, when it's time to go to business, Matt Hume, mm -hmm. Brad Kurtzen, who's uh, um, also in DJ's corner, mm -hmm. um, they they have a way of, of just simply bringing out the best in guys. Um, and, and that's certainly the case with DJ. They have obviously the most success. Now, what I wanted to say, too, though, the second story um, of this, DJ, I feel like in the interviews that I saw leading up to this and even afterwards, um, DJ is now, I think he's finally getting to a point of comfort or, lack of a better phrase, confidence in him being the real him, letting loose a little bit, 
um, in his interviews, letting the world, not giving the world the good guy that I think he thinks they want, but giving the world the real DJ. I mean, I was proud of him for saying right. fuck shit and damn oh, no. in one interview <laughs> in the post fight. Right. You know, um, the guy will can talk some shit, but it's talking shit from a place of. No, we got to put an E. Uh, confidence. Thing in our thing. Oh, I think we got. Uh, uh, I think I think I got to drop another couple mm-hmm. bigger <laughs> ones to get that E. But um, I think D- the fact that DJ has proven to everybody, look, guys, the proof is in the pudding. Go look at the checklist. I've got right. crosses out on all of them. Now I'm, I'm guessing he's at that point where he can feel like he can rock that swagger a little bit. Well, and it's I, so deserved. That, you know? that's, I, I think you're absolutely right. And it, but MMA in general is that type of sport where mm-hmm. I think women and men surprise themselves every day when they fight because fights are so unpredictable and they bring out – something within you that you don't know you have. And that's what fighting is. I mean, yeah. for people that have stepped in the cage to have this conversation, they would be like, yeah, ex- exactly, I think, you know? Mm-hmm. Because when you get in there, you in the back of your mind, you, you know you can do it, you know? But you don't know how much you can do because you're pushed to different limits throughout mm-hmm. every, you know, every battle. So I think with, with a guy like DJ, I think he's finally at a point, you're right, where he's like, damn. I, I deserve to be I able to talk good. what I want. Yeah. I think he's he knows yeah. physically in the cage that he's that good, you know? But, right. yeah, his personality he's, is just as good as anybody else, any, anybody else wearing the uh, um, wearing the gold in the UFC. Right. So you guys think he's a pound-for-pound pound fighter? Best pound-for-pound pound fighter? Uh, well, he's been one of my top three for one, sure. I, yeah, I would give well, it... Well, who's your number one? Well, okay, to be honest, I mean, I, Ronda Rousey. Right. And I'm not saying that biased because I'm a female, no, but... I'm looking at people that have cleaned out their weight classes. Mm-hmm. And people say, oh, well, the bantamweight, women's bantamweight division isn't as good as the men's flyweight division. And I disagree. That, I disagree as well. I mean, you have girls like uh, Liz Carmooch that Ronda dominated and, you know, girls like Alexis Davis. And, you know, you have a lot of great girls. So I say Ronda Rousey and DJ are tied for me at number mm-hmm. one. Um, Not John I, Jones? I think John Jones is just as dominant, but... I don't think he's the pound for pound best fighter. I don't know. There's something about hmm. his style that maybe doesn't show me that. I, I don't. Hmm. I don't. I can't put my finger on it. But I, speaking of John Jones, well, go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I was going to put my two cents in and just say that I don't really well, right let, now. Let me. Let me. Let me finish. Hold okay. on one second. Let me just say this. I thought she was done. John, I was done. But <laughs> I, I, I want to finish. John Jones. He grinds people out. He's a grinder. He wears them down. And then he finishes them. I mean, he's he's great at what he does. He'll, mm-hmm. You know, he'll hold the clinch game for a while, wear their arms out. I think he's very, um, he plans everything out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's he's very... Well, he'll pick apart, like he picked apart DC, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think he abides by a game plan, and I think he executes it perfectly. And I think that he's very intelligent in the cage. And for That's that... That's DJ, too. And, <laughs> yeah. But and then no. hell, Ronda, but no DJ, doubt. D, like, perfect example. There's 10 seconds left. He did not have to go for that arm bar. Mm-hmm. Arm bar for Mount is a very vulnerable position sometimes. He could have mm-hmm. easily reversed it and gotten, you know, the top position. It could have mm-hmm. ended bad. You know, it was a risk he didn't have to take, and he mm-hmm. took it. And that is the type of fighter I like. Mm-hmm. Ronda Rousey, she takes risks in the 10 sure. seconds that some of her fights last. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So in my definition of pound for pound best fighter, it's someone that entertains and someone that lets it mm-hmm. all out there interesting and in that aspect yes dj and ronda i don't like the i don't like that argument of um of comparing weight class to weight class because obviously I body agree. type is very so much different. goes into it i mean how do you say that one weight class is you know more dominant than another because es- especially when you're talking about the ufc men and women as well men and women but the ufc you know you're not going to find you're hard pressed to find the top uh, top guys elsewhere. You know, the UFC, for right. the most part, has 90% the top competition in the world. So mm-hmm. if you've cleaned out that division, it's fair to say you've cleaned out most, if not all, of the top MMA fighters in the world. In the world, yeah. absolutely. Um, aside from the few that, that aren't signed, but, you know, mm-hmm. certainly when they come in here, then there is that uh, uh, that push to, you know, to get them up the, the top 10 re- with relative quickness. Right. So having said all of that, news time. Do we have a news... Uh, News thingy. Let's go to... What does it say? After Buzz TV News. 
Nice. According to MMAfighting.com, which is, we all agree, it's a reputable, you know, not some, oh, yeah. not Ariel Front Row Brian or whatever, you know. <laughs> uh, was it Front Row Brian? Yeah. Props to Front Row Brian. UFC champion John Jones, and this is like breaking, like in the last hour or two. Breaking news. John Jones is being sought for questioning in a hit and run car accident. Uh, Middle aged woman's car was struck Sunday morning. The other offender in the vehicle fled the scene. Uh, hmm. There is no warrant for his arrest, but they did just kind of seek it in for questioning, which is protocol. Uh, there were some other rumors earlier. I'm not going to get into because it's, rumors. to be honest with you, it's all, it's, until it's confirmed, it's all completely irrelevant. Yeah. But apparently, it, it does look like it's confirmed that he's out of UFC 187. Other people are saying that it's in jeopardy. Either way, if he's only at, if he's only there for questioning, wanted for questioning, why would they pull him out? And, I mean, I got I got More MMA. It's like I got MMA Weekly, I which is another reputable uh, mm-hmm. website saying in jeopardy. I got MMA Fighting saying he's out. Uh, so who knows? I mean, it's kind of a big <laughs> deal to be honest. This with is you. a really big Especially deal, especially with I the mean, whole cocaine and rehab thing that happened if, a few months ago. Now, let, yeah. I'm just gonna say everything that I'm saying is hypothetical. Hypothetically speaking, because I don't want to, I don't want to damage anyone's name more than it has to be. Hypothetically speaking, that Jones did hit and run, mm-hmm. and they did find drugs in his car. This is going to be his second drug offense to the UFC, you know, in our in our recent history. And this is going to look bad. This is going to look really bad. Now, I don't know if it's going to build him as the evil villain character and kind of give him something to run with. or well, never mind building him. I mean, if those headlines turn out to be true or any part of it, I think we're talking about him sending him to, to rehab, you know, getting some some help some for these personal help. issues yeah. and putting aside the fight career. I mean, yeah. according, to, uh, very true. according to Anthony Johnson's manager... Uh, he said that as of right now, he hasn't heard anything about the fight not being ha- not happening. Like I said, it's going to be an interesting 24 hours. Yeah, in the next 24 in hours. In the next day, I'm sure much will unfold. I'm sure by the time people are listening to this, maybe later tonight, uh, as right now it's almost seven. Maybe later tonight, tomorrow, I'm sure a lot more will be happening. But literally, this is happening real time, right now. So. So guys, keep checking MMAfighting.com for your facts, and then keep checking the rest of the internet for just wild hooey and. Uh, <clears throat> BS. But until then... <laughs> and internet rumors. Until then, enjoy your week, guys. We will be back next Sunday. No, we won't. No, we won't. Oh, my God, you're right. Two weeks from now. Two weeks but from now. But I will be back, guys. Uh, Thursday, 5 p.m., Ultimate Fighter 21, Black Zillions versus ATT after Ooh, show. Oh, it's going to be a good one. Go watch Jay. And I'll be covering Extreme Rules in a few hours. Oh. Nah, that too. Go watch George. Yeah. Wrestling. I'll be covering nothing but my pillowcase. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! Well, what, maybe people can go to your bar. Don't you have a bar that you? Yeah, they can come in. You guys can see me. It's called Flights. Find it. Is that it? Find it. G Hermosa, yeah, yeah. Twitter, Instagram, hashtag, uh, just hashtag me, hashtag George Hermosa, <laughs> at G Hermosa. Hashtag him. Where can we find you, Jay? J Tan seven one six as always, and theuofmma.com. Buy tickets. Buy tickets. Buy tickets. Buy, buy tickets. tickets. Buy tickets. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Buzz uh, later. Not yet? Not uh, yet. No, oh, would you, okay, you guys can't <laughs> find me anywhere, I guess. At Daria the Jersey Devil and all over the web, I guess. I don't know. See you guys later. But, okay, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Okay, sorry. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz Buzz you later! Later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.